Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another Tuesday night in the man cave. Um, tonight, it's going to be a bit of a random selection of uh, bits and pieces. I've been busy doing the uh, setting up that uh, that ramble ride that we've got going in October. I'll talk about that a little bit further. So the things that we're going to touch base on is the inline fuel filter. I've done that. I've had a few problems which we'll run through uh, with that. Harry's um, back rack, you know, on like, especially on cruisers, even on uh, sports bikes as well, I would presume, um, the back racks are quite a small, um, small, narrow, bloody thing. When you put big bags on them, they all sag all over the place. So I've had a fix that I've done for ages, um, and I'll just yeah, touch base with you guys what I've done with that and how it's worked and whatever. I've also got um, grip puppies which was thanks to uh, Billy Four Rocks uh, mentioning it in that, uh, what video was it? I don't know. What do I mean, what, I don't know, one of the bloody videos. Uh, the Posty Bike, someone mentioned about how um, Nay's grips were really good. Anyway, Billy Four Rocks made a comment about these bloody grip puppies. So um, we'll be doing something with that. Now you can hear Nay in the background, I think you can hear her. That's her sanding over there. So you're most probably going to have to put up with a bit of noise from her, but I'll go and show you what she's up to. <laughs> then, when, when I come back, uh, yeah, when I come back, show you what she's doing in there, and then I'll uh, show you what else is coming up in the video. Cool. What are you doing? <laughs> Sorry. You gave me a heart attack. <laughs> very loud in here, I don't hear the door. <laughs> well, there you go, that's what Nay's doing out here. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean to bloody scare her. All right, here's what else is coming up in the video. So what's coming up this week in Shit Easy Motorcycle Camp Cooking? In this video tonight, we've got another useless tips for the whippersnappers. I'll give you a heads up on what to expect on Friday night's motorcycle filming and gear. We're going to run through some of your comments and responses from last week's videos. Oh, and of course, what's coming up next Tuesday in the Man Cave. All right, guys, so let's uh, start with Max and his two inline fuel filters. What was supposed to be a simple, um, a simple job, as always, simple jobs never bloody end up being bloody simple. So I've now got it done. Uh, so obviously you saw I had the issues in it. I, I broke that um, that plastic tea piece. I put a bloody uh, a hole in my finger, and um, yeah, so that stuffed it all up. So I went. I bought a the next day. I bought a, a, a tea piece, a plastic tea piece, cost it bugger all. Um, put that in, connected up these. I've just used these. Well, I don't know what you call them, but uh, like they're like radiator clamps. They're um, I think they call them worm clamps. I'll look, I'll, as I'm talking, I'll bring you a bit closer. So yeah, I've got, uh, I've put these worm clamps on. So this 6.5 mil hose, because the stock one was six mil, this is 6.5, it actually fits really well on the T-piece, on the, the pipe up here. It was only on these lawnmower inline fuel filters that seemed to be you know, not a real snug fit. So I've used these worm clamps or radiator clamps or whatever you want to bloody well call them um, to, to, to cinch them down. Now I had, I had an issue um, and that is after I did it all, I went for a ride, tested it all out, everything ran, buddy, you know, Max started up, took him for a ride and I stuck it out um, just out on the, on the path out the back Anyway, I was inside doing whatever and they were sitting out here and she comes running into the house going, I think, I think there's something wrong with Max, you better come out. <laughs> actually, I was eating bacon and eggs. Um, so I was actually caught in a bloody, in a dilemma. I'm eating bacon and eggs, but Max has a problem. What do I do? <laughs> Max won out, so I ran out to see what the hell was going on and here he was dripping, he was leaking fuel out. So what had happened, and I don't know whether I nicked it, but here it had all, it was all coming out of here. There was, this was all ripped. So I don't know whether I did it when I was putting these on or whether it was already in that section of hose when I bought it. I'm at a, uh, I'm, yeah, I was at a loss to how that happened, but 
I just re-put another piece of hose in there and everything seems to be running okay now. Now that's, that's, that brings me to another thing and that is that um, by doing this, I have now, because you know, I'm always, I like things simple. Simple things, you know, the, the least amount of problems that you can have with something. So now what I've done by doing this inline fuel, uh, fuel filters, I've now added all these extra little bloody points that can stuff up and I <laughs> already had that. And I'll show you the grass, this is the grass. Um, that was all the fuel, I don't know how much fuel leaked out, it looks, looks like bloody five litres or something like that. So yeah, that's the, and that's the whole thing, you know, every time you add something to, you, to your motorbike, um, you're just adding another little thing for, uh, you know, something to go wrong. Um, anyway, so there it is, that's, that is the done deal. Um, now my other thing with this, I'm trying to get out so you can see it, um, is that it's not exactly the best looking thing. It looks a bit, I don't know, you could call it utili utilitarian, but I'm not exactly 100% with that. So I've come up with a little idea. And I'll put it on and then I'll show you, see what you think. Actually guys, what I'll do is, um, I'll, you'll watch me actually doing it. What I've got is I've just got some uh, foam, buddy. this is actually the stuff that I used on the handle grips for the posties. I've cut a little piece out of here, just for it sitting over here. But what I want to do is just chuck that over there. Then I've got another one. Chuck that over like that. Then just using these uh, little gotcha straps that I have. Right around there. Pull that tight. Now, I don't know. This actually, I think this looks a lot better. Um, but I don't know, you guys will tell me whether I, it's bloody stupid or not. But there you go. So, there you go, guys. I think to me that looks a whole lot better. It's a lot hidden. Um, I suppose it's going to add a little bit of extra um, protection to it. But um, yeah, it's more a looks thing for me. And that shouldn't be, uh, that sh you know, if I needed to have a look at those uh, filters just to undo that and just have a look, that's, that's not a problem. But there you go, guys. Cool bananas. All right, guys, so I was talking about this uh, back racks and having bags on them and having problems with them either sagging over and while they're sitting on this small, tiny little thing, things move as they're strapped down and you're jiggling around. Things in the bag start to move and then that it sags and it's just you've got to keep re bloody fixing stuff up. The other issue that you have can have is if you have a good bag like this, that you would you know sit over this. So if if I'm too uprighting, so I've got nay on the back, this is where this bag would go. If if it's just me, I'll run it that way like that and either have nothing on here or I then have this big bag sitting on there like that. Now when I've got bags on there, not a problem. But when you've got this and there's a whole heap of weight in this and you've got it sitting just on that little thing, the bottoms of the bag um, end up getting wear points on them because it's yeah, it's jiggling and vibrating. So, what I to fix both those problems, so the sagging and the moving, um, and the wear point from from those from the good bag, is I made up a a plate. Actually, I'll show you what this looks like. So this is what we're talking about now. I know it's all flaky. The, this is an OEM bloody um, Suzuki rack, and it's just all gone, all flaky, but. Shit happens and I don't really bloody care. <laughs> so, so my idea is was to make this footprint bigger. So how I so how I did that was just I made up a big board, drilled two holes through it. Now this, I mean this could be ply board, ply board, it could be MDF, or it could be my old signs. If you watch the other video, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll use this for something else, can't remember now. Um, but just this plasticky type of bloody stuff. So it's an old sign that I had. 
So that's what this is. I just cut that out and I just covered it all in duct tape. Drilled the two holes. Put um, so I've got two bolts. Then I've got these big washers so that that uh, slots in between between there. And of course, there's a uh, a spring washer um, in between there so that it doesn't vibrate and undo. Having the um, what do you call those things, guys? They are Oh. Wing nuts! They're wing nuts! <laughs> um, makes it easy to take on and off. So, that basically just sits on there. Hang on a minute, I'll get it put on. So, as you can see, I also recessed, well, there it is, there it is, I recessed it so that the head of the bolt goes in. So, that doesn't um, you know, protrude out and, and then poke into the bag. So that just simply slots where are we? in there like that. So I'll show you, that's massive. So obviously I don't ride around this with no bag on it with this big ass thing on there. It'd be a good uh, TV table. But that I'll show you with a bag on it. So if I'm putting the bag on there, on there, that just works an absolute treat. Now you've got to remember guys, um, I'm not trying to make this bigger to put more weight. I mean these racks can only hold so much weight. It's just to make the bag that you're putting on there, just to give it a good platform. This bag does not move. You put the two straps on it and that's it. It's there. It doesn't wriggle around. I'd never have to change. Um, I never have to change yeah, you know, even pull up somewhere and then check it and make sure it's, you know, re bloody jig around and all that kind of stuff. I'm babbling, I'm shutting up. So that's that, I'll give you a quick look. So that's how it looks on the bike. So that works really well. <clears throat> Now I could have I could have used this for this bag as well, but I didn't like the idea of it actually protruding out. Um, it cost me nothing to make it, so I thought I'll make another one. So same deal. You can see I've got the holes, so I use the same bolt and whatever. That would just sit on there like that. And hey presto, that bag just sits beautifully on there. You don't get any, it just holds it really good. Give you another look at that. Oh. And yeah, so this bag, um, I use these um, D-rings to strap it down. I don't actually strap over it because all these pockets are all easy access. It's a really good bag actually. Um, yeah, they work so well. We've even got a little one made up for uh, Nay's um, intruder. That one fits on there. And she has the little bag um, and it just perfectly fits on there. Her back rack's actually even smaller than, than Harry's. There you go, guys. All right, guys, so grip puppies. So as I was saying, um, we put just um, some of that foam stuff on these handles, on the on the, on the bloody handlebars of the pasty bikes, because the grips on there, the stock ones, there, yeah, there's nothing to them, and then because of the suspension, it was really hard on your hands. So we just put some foam around. It worked really great. Anyway, long story short, Billy Four Rocks, as I said, told me uh, mentioned about these grip puppies. So. I checked them out and I thought, oh right, cool. There was lots of reviews, lots of comments, and it was all positive. I, I couldn't find anything bad about them. I tried to see who was the dealer here in Australia, and it's actually Andy Straps. So Andy, everybody would most probably know Andy Straps because of his strapping system. Um, he's actually uh, in Melbourne, and he is the dealer. So I was able to get these wholesale. So we're selling these on our site. They're twenty nine dollars ninety five. It seems a lot of money for a bit of foam, but you can feel they're, they're bloody good quality. They're UV, um, UV, they say ozone. I've never heard ozone safe. But anyway, UV, ozone, and I don't know, something else, but um, they won't just 
start wearing out because of uh, the elements. They'll obviously wear from use like any grip. Um, so I've actually put some on Max, which I'll show you after I've done this, but what I'll do is I'm going to rip off these other um, foam ones off the two posties and then we'll whack them on. They're pretty bloody easy to do. It was easy apart from having the bark busters, you know, pulling those apart to get them on. All right, guys, so we'll remove Mark's dodgy mods. It might have been dodgy, but I tell you what, it did the trick. They loved them. So that's all it was, was just a bit of um, foam taped on. <laughs> Alright guys, so I've taken all, all the old ones off. I've just got a little bowl and I put a bit of, I don't know, actually it was car wash um, stuff in it just to make a bit of soapy water. Um, this is actually a couple of days old from when I did Max. So all I've got to do is just stick that stuff in there. I'll do this, I'll put that over there, I'll do it and then I'll come back to you. Alright, so I've put some stuff in there. All we've got to do, hopefully, is wiggle. Wiggle that on there like that. Oh, I forgot. I was supposed to actually measure and cut. That's all right. As per usual, like I said, Mark's dodginess. I'll just get a pair of scissors. Oh, that's pretty dodgy, isn't it? That's terrible. It's all right, it's an ace bike. Don't tell her I said that. There you go. All right, I'm gonna do that properly on the other one. All right, second attempt, so I'm gonna measure it up. And I reckon about, 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 about there. I find scissors are the best for cutting it. And we'll put the cut side on the inside so then we have that nice look there. I mean, these are posty bikes, so it doesn't really bloody matter. There. there we go. Look at that. There you go. Beautiful dodgy. <laughs> oh, I'll give you a close up on it. I like that. So they're really, um, oh geez, where am I? So you can see that they've got some sponge to them. So they obviously make the, the grip um, thicker but it, 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 they feel pretty good, they don't feel over thick. So there you go guys, I mean, that's the two posty bikes, all got a set of these bloody grip puppies and I reckon it literally took me a matter of five minutes to, uh, to put them on. On Charlie's one, I've cut it a bit short um, here because I actually uh, shit with Max or, yeah, Max and Charlie shares the Omni Cruise, which I'll show you when I get Max back in here, um, the Omni Cruise Control. Uh, goes in there and works with that so I just have it a little bit short just to accommodate for that so There you go. Um, so I've had a bit of a play with them. They feel really good moving the bikes around. They're just super comfy that way um, I've tried it with my thick gloves and my uh, thin gloves um, And they, they seem fine. The only thing I'm most probably and I haven't had a chance to get out and do some technical riding so where I'm you know, doing that real bloody oh, and I'm really you know, hanging on for grim life, whether that's gonna make a difference. But anyway, I'll get back to you about that in another video. And I've got a lot of, a lot of little things that I've done that I'll most probably um, at some stage just do a video where I run through all the stuff and just have a bit of a recap on a lot of stuff. All right guys, I've moved the posty bikes out. I've got Max back down in here. So Max has already got these grip puppies on. And they do, they feel really, really um, comfortable. Uh, they, don't, they don't move at all. I reckon if they were to move, um, actually, right. no, 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 see that's the bloody grip moving. 
Um, yeah, that's what, I was, that's what I was gonna say, is I reckon the grip would move, the actual original grip would move before these moving on the grip. So they really hang on to there. I'll show you what I was talking about with the Omni Cruise. So that's what they look like on there. So obviously I had to undo this to move that off to then slip these on, which wasn't, you know, there was no bloody trouble. Actually, this side was really easy um, on this side because it has that funny bloody nut and duvalaki in there. That was a bit of a trick, but I figured it out. So on here you can see I've got the, oops, sorry, the Omni Cruise. So basically what I was saying is I've just cut that, so that foam thing there ends there, and then this actually runs just on the grip. You normally have a band that these run on, but um, same with the post, I never need it. It just runs straight on the, on the actual original grip. So, so far, grip puppies are bloody looking pretty good. It's just that technical thing I wanna um, fully test out um, before you know, give them my, I mean, they're a thumbs up just as they are and riding around normally. Um, and I suppose if you're doing the technical stuff, it's more your, you know, it's your, it's your, what do you call them, enduros and whatever, and they're not looking at bloody putting grip puppies on their, <laughs> on their stuff. All right, cool. Okay, guys, so for this Thursday coming in the Shit Easy Motorcycle Camp cooking, what I'm going to be doing is basically running through all the cooking equipment that I use. So that's from making cups of coffees to doing the bacon and eggs. So the pots and pans, the bowls, the plates, um, the utensils, um, the paper towel, everything that I would bring for cleaning, like the, the wash up kit that I have, um, all that, I'll just bring all that out and just show you everything that I've got and how I use it. And when you know some things I, well, I'll only use it, I'll only take X amount for this trip and, and then I might bring other stuff for another trip or whatever. Cool. Alright guys, so this Friday I've got another video coming out for the um, motorcycle film and gear. Now this video I think is the most important video out of all of them, whether it's what camera I'm using, the software, the, you know, a lot of people ask about, oh, what editing software do you use, um, and stuff like that, and mountings and all that kind of shit. To, and I, I'm presuming that people are, that are watching this is interested in making their videos better for other people to watch. Um, and I don't think, I mean, partly it has that to do with it, but I, this next video is all about, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, how to make it interesting, how to make people want to watch the bloody thing, I suppose, keep people interested. You know, in this day and age, everybody is so, um, what do you call it? Our, our attention span is very, very short. Um, so... And when we've all done this, you know, we've got it. Yeah, we've got the camera, and we want to bloody chuck it on. We're going to go film ourselves riding, and we just—it's just just this bloody one shot out in front, and we're just riding along. And we get home, we chuck it on, we have a look, and oh, look at that! Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, there was this corner coming up, and and then we upload it to YouTube, and then other people watching us doing that it just bores the absolute bloody shit out of it unless you've got a great narrative to go along with it you're telling a story or something like that well then you know that's a good thing but if it's just if you're not talking or you're just talking shit or whatever that's not interesting people just go oh, i'm not really interested in watching this so i want to touch base on stuff like that and and then there's some little tests that you can do when you watch tvs there's a whole science behind it um, and then things like framing and making things interesting and all that kind of shit. So that's what's coming up this Friday. Cool. <laughs> okay, guys, so useless tips for the whippersnappers. This is a really quick one. It involves a gotcha strap or any bit of bloody string that's um, paracord. Now, you know when, you, when those dreadful times that you've got to put your motorbike on a trailer or you're going on a ferry or something like that where the bike is stationary but the thing that it's on is actually moving. Normally what you would do is you'd put your bike into first gear which then stops that moving around. There's always that little bit of play. Um, now I learned this one when me and Nay went with Harry and we went and did uh, Tasmania. We took the bikes uh, or the bike onto the ferry. And when we, when we actually went into the ferry and pulled up, these guys come around and they have these lacquer bands. And I think, what the hell are these guys doing? What they did was they actually put the lacquer band on the front brake 
around that and pulled the front brake on. So that meant that you didn't have to put the bike in gear. I mean, you could do that anyway, but that actually made that the, as soon as you've got your brake on, there's no movement apart from the suspension move. So I'll just show you now how quick and easy it is. All right, so with the gotcha strap, and I know, yeah, yeah, I'm always talking about bloody gotcha straps. They're just that easy. I'm using this blue one because you'll be able to see it better showing up. So yeah, you're just pulling that on, the brake's on, and then, whoops, wrap that around like that, and hey, presto, that just locks it all up. Now, you don't have to use a gotcha strap, obviously. Same deal. But you could just do it with a bit of string, just, you know, lock that on there like that, and I suppose tie a little bloody knot in it. Uh, get around there, you bugger. All right, it'd be much really better to do a different knot that you could undo easier, but yeah, you get the idea. So a bit of string will do the trick. So there you go, guys. It doesn't get any bloody easier than that. <laughs> All right, guys, so I was saying about the uh, the Dual Sport Ramble um, that I've got coming up on the 22nd and 23rd of October. Um, so basically, it's the same old Dual Sport Ramble, except we're doing it um, unsupport, unsupported. So that means that we're not having the Jeep following behind. So there will be me and Alistair will be lead ride and uh, sweep ride. So and we'll most probably do a sweep. So I'll start out. I'll be lead rider and then uh, Alistair will be the sweep rider behind, using the corner man system as per usual. And then through the ride, we'll most probably swap around because we'll both have the GPS route. He's done the route before. Um, yeah. So, but what that means is that um, you know the good old bloody jeep and nays uh, following behind, and then we pull up somewhere, and then out comes all the bloody chocolates and cake and bloody cups of teas and all that kind of bullshit that's not going to happen on this ride so it's um you've got to be self-sufficient uh, we've actually put it up so i'm hoping once this uh comes up on on tuesday which is what you're watching now there's actually some bloody uh ride things left we're we're, we're capping it at 14 riders not including me and alistair there's only four uh nine uh spots left at the moment so you've got to bring your own food, you've got to bring your own cooking gear and water and you know all that bits and pieces. So it kind of that kind of like ties into that whole cooking program that I've been doing. Um, one guy's already said he won't be he won't be bringing along any of that bloody Heinz tea shit. So let the cook off begin. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's ninety nine dollars uh, to come on that ride. And yeah, 22nd and 23rd of October. So hopefully there's still some spots left when this is being viewed. Sorry to YouTube, I should have timed this better. But anyway, there you go. Hopefully next year we'll have some, uh, we'll be doing some more rides. But anyway, we'll talk about that another time. Cool. All right, guys, it's time for comments and responses. Now, I've got to be a bit quiet because it's actually 1 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> and the neighbours might get a bit bloody pissed off. They were saying my voice is getting very loud. All right, this first comment is from Gary Rogers. He says, G'day Mark, when is Foxtel or Seven Mate going to sign you up for a new show? <laughs> uh, no, they'd bloody be telling me I couldn't say bloody and all that kind of shit, but anyway. Another tip, when you download your footage from the cards, what he's talking about is when I do the video about uh, these cards. So the cards that goes in your camera, whether it's a big one like that or it's one of those micro cards, um, always reformat it in the device. This will maintain the high writing speed required for big videos. It's basically the same principle when a hard drive is defragged on a PC. Every time a new file is written and deleted, it leaves holes in the petition table of the card, like potholes in a road. When the card is formatted, it's like resealing the road, giving it a smooth surface. On the formatted card, uh, the data can be transferred more efficiently whilst recording, therefore providing smoother footage while recording. Whilst recording, and man, that's I've actually seen read that before. Um, so that I'm glad that he that he did that because I stopped actually doing that. I forgot all about it. So that's and that's just sounds very bloody logical and really good stuff. So Gary, thanks, mate. Good bloody good on ya. All right, guys. Next one is from Hey Shorty. To get the wider flame, Mark. Now what he's talking about is 
this bloody, uh, uh, what do you call it, gas thing. So, that flame is very, very narrow. So when the pan's on it, it's going right in the middle and not kind of like all the way around it. Turn that off. You've got to remember to be quiet. To get the wider flame mark, you could use a piece of gauze mat to disperse the flame. Works a treat. Uh, great work, mate. Anyway. So, yeah, I never bloody thought of that, you know. So what I've done is I found it on eBay. Um, just So if you remember, like, being at school or if you ever worked in a bloody laboratory or whatever, wow, the rocket scientists, you guys will know it. Um, so it's a bit of uh, mesh-like um, uh, matting. And then Norton, they have, like, a... Uh, it looks like a paint spot on it. It's actually ceramic paint, kind of, like, in the middle of it. Um, so at school... You used to have those beakers, the gas beakers, and the and the bloody tripod, and you used to have, and I think back in back in bloody our day, it most probably would have been something like um, uh, masonite or what's that terrible stuff that they put in ceilings and shit. What's the? Oh, I can't remember the name of it, but anyway, you know what I'm talking about. So I've bought one, um, and it should be here any day. So it would be good to really test that out. So hey, shorty, thanks, mate. <laughs> All right, guys, this comment's from Ada80. Uh, you, sir, are frigging entertaining and informative. Good video. Thanks, mate. <laughs> um, I had this debate with a friend a while back. Long story short, we'd gladly lug a bit more weight to eat something enjoyable that we can cook quickly while uh, we're hungry that isn't gross to clean up. Plus, with the tins you've used, uh, can be reused for other things. Coffee cup. So he's talking about... The, the dehydrated and the and the tin so and what he's saying is the tin can be reused um, reused oh, coffee cup toilet digger I thought that was bloody clever uh, using it like a shovel um, toilet digger punch holes in them and chuck a candle inside garbage can proximity alarm throw a rock in a can when your board game ashtray spittoon and the best one Throwing it at bears, etc. <laughs> so that was, uh, yeah, I like that one. That was very good. All right, got another comment. Uh, hey, Mark, really digging the new video series for an easy, cheap anti fog solution. Take some liquid dish soap and rub it on both sides of the, lens, of the lenses. Don't use any water and just wipe it off. It works pretty well. Keep up the great work. It's much appreciated. Cheers, Brent. So that was Brent Freeman. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna. I'll most probably do a video where I'll do that. Now we've got some anti-fog wipe stuff that we sell, and I'd like to do a comparison between the two. So we'll do that in another um, in another one. So yeah, great stuff, Brent. Thanks, mate. All right, last one, guys. Um, from Jay Kelly. Hey, Mark. Just wondering if you remove the stock fuel filter from or oh, the stock filter. So when we did that, those inline ones, say, and when I bent that pipe, there was that little tiny white um, fuel filter that goes in there. When I did that, I forgot all about taking it out. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to leave it in there and just run for a bit with it and just see if there, if there happens to be a bit of a problem with it in there. But I will eventually take that out and then just see if there's a bit of a difference. So yeah, there you go. All right, guys, that's it. Well, there you go, guys. That's another um, Tuesday night in the man cave. Next week, what we're hoping to do is me and Nay are going to jump on Harry and we're going to ride through Bendigo. So, you know, when we went on the pasty bikes and we were going through there and I was saying, yeah, oh, there's a police station and there's the popping head and, and, and all that kind of stuff. What we'll do is we'll actually go on the street, follow that same thing and point out some of the stuff. At night time, it's pretty good So because we've, we've got the big cathedral and all the buildings are all kind of like lit up and you'll be able to get to see the fountain and all that kind of stuff. So, um... So that's what we're going to hopefully do. Um, weather's looking a bit bad, but I reckon at least one bloody day or one night we should be able to get out there and do that. And we'll obviously throw in a few other bits and pieces as per usual. Have no idea what the hell they are, but um, you'll find out next week. Keep on riding, guys.